As chief of the Gestapo during the Second World War, Heinrich Müller was responsible for the repression of all forms of dissent within Germany, including the surveillance, arrest, and torture of political opponents, suspected communists, and anyone deemed to be a threat to the Nazi regime. He led the investigation into the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich and oversaw the roundup and interrogation of over 5,000 individuals suspected of involvement in the 20th of July 1944 bomb plot to assassinate Hitler. Mueller also played a significant role in the persecution of Jews and other minority groups, overseeing through one of his subordinates, Adolf Eichmann, deportations to the death camps. Despite his prominent role in the Nazi regime, Mueller's whereabouts and fate post-war remain a mystery. He was last sighted in the Führer bunker on the 1st of May 1945, but was not seen again either dead or alive. While some have speculated that he may have escaped capture to South America, it is more likely that he was killed during the chaotic fall of Berlin, and his body never recovered or identified. Meet Otto Skorzeny, once called the most dangerous man in Europe. This daring commando leader earned his infamous nickname during World War II for his bravery and resourcefulness on the battlefield. Born in Vienna in 1908, Skorzeny joined the Austrian Nazi Party in 1931 and the SS in 1934. But it was during the war that he really made his mark. Skorzeny led a team of SS commandos that were part of a daring mission to rescue Italian dictator Benito Mussolini from his mountain prison. The mission was a success and earned Skorzeny great acclaim in Germany. Skorzeny went on to lead other commando operations, including a mission during the Battle of the Bulge, where he organized his troops to dress as U.S. soldiers and use U.S. vehicles and equipment to get through the Allied lines. He was captured at the end of the war and put on trial in 1947 for violating the laws of war. However, he was eventually acquitted. After the war, Skorzeny worked for various governments and organizations. He remains a fascinating and controversial figure to this day. Grand Admiral Karl Donitz was a German naval officer who served as the commander of the German Navy during the Second World War, and briefly, as the German head of state in the last days of the war. Born in 1891 in Berlin, Donitz joined the German Navy in 1910. During the First World War, he served on submarines and became a submarine commander. During the Second World War, Donitz led the German Navy's submarine campaign, which aimed to disrupt Allied shipping in the Atlantic. He was appointed Supreme Commander of the German Navy in 1943 and continued to emphasize submarine warfare. However, despite his efforts, the Allies eventually gained the upper hand in the Battle of the Atlantic. In April 1945, after the death of Hitler, Donitz was appointed as Germany's head of state, but only held the position for 20 days before the country's surrender. After the war, he was tried and convicted of war crimes and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Despite his controversial legacy, Donitz is remembered for his leadership of the German Navy and his contributions to submarine warfare. Albert Kesselring was a highly decorated German military commander during the Second World War. Born in 1885 and entering the Bavarian Army in 1904, he saw service as an artillery officer during the First World War. From 1933, he became a key player in the re-establishment of the German aviation industry and creation of the Luftwaffe. He served as a field marshal of the Luftwaffe and later as commander-in-chief of German forces in Italy. Kesselring participated in several major military campaigns, including the invasion of Poland, the Battle of France, Operation Barbarossa, and both the North African and Italian campaigns. After the war, Kesselring was convicted of war crimes for his command role in authorizing reprisals against Italian civilians. He was sentenced to death, but his sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment and he was eventually released in 1952. He was known for his strategic skill and was often referred to by his admirers as Smiling Albert. However, his involvement in war crimes remains a controversial and debated topic to this day. Wilhelm Canaris was a German admiral and intelligence officer who played a significant role in the German military during the Second World War. He was born in Aplerbeck, Germany in 1887 and began his naval career in 1905. He saw service in the First World War, including on U-boats in the Mediterranean. Canaris rose through the ranks of the German Navy and became an expert in intelligence and espionage. In 1935, he was appointed the head of the Abwehr, the German military intelligence agency, and he quickly became one of the most influential figures in the German military establishment. Despite his position, Canaris became increasingly disenchanted with the Nazi regime and started working to undermine it. However, his various acts of resistance and sabotage were eventually discovered, and he was arrested. Canaris was put on trial and found guilty of high treason. He was sentenced to death and hanged on April 9, 1945, at Flossenburg concentration camp just weeks before the end of the war in Europe. Sepp Dietrich was a high-ranking German Waffen-SS officer during the Second World War. He was born in Harvang in Germany in 1892. 
and joined the German army at the outbreak of the First World War. After the war, he became a member of the Freikorps and later joined the Nazi party in the SS. Dietrich rose through the ranks of the SS and was appointed as the commander of the SS Leibstandarte, an elite unit that served initially as the personal bodyguard of Adolf Hitler. As commander of the Leibstandarte, he played a role in the invasions of Poland, the Netherlands, France and Greece. He later commanded the 1st SS Panzer Corps on the Eastern Front. In 1944 Dietrich was given command of the 6th Panzer Army playing a leading role during the early stages of the Battle of the Bulge. He was arrested by the Allies in 1945, and was later convicted for war crimes committed by troops under his command. He was sentenced to life in prison, but his sentence was later reduced, and he was released in 1955. Upon his release from prison he took an active part in the activities of HIAG, an organization and lobby group of former Waffen-SS members and campaigned for the rehabilitation of the Waffen-SS. When Dietrich died in 1966, it was reported that around 6,000 people attended his funeral. Do you know that Nazi Germany's war planners knew Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union, would likely not succeed, and that one of the key people involved in that planning had a central role in the defeat at Stalingrad? The planning by the German High Command revealed that Barbarossa could potentially fail due to the vast size of the Soviet Union and the limited resources available to the German army. Hitler refused to accept this advice, and the operation was eventually launched in June 1941. General, later Field Marshal, Friedrich Paulus, was a key member of the German general staff involved in wargaming of Barbarossa, and knew the risks of the invasion. In an ironic twist, Paulus was in command of the German 6th Army during the battle for Stalingrad, and was captured by the Soviet forces when the 6th Army was surrounded and forced to surrender. Adolf Galland was a German general and flying ace during World War II serving as the commander of the Luftwaffe's fighter arm. Born in 1912, Galland joined the German military in 1930. He first saw combat in the Spanish Civil War, and went on to serve with distinction in the early years of World War II. He recorded a total of 104 aerial victories during the war, becoming one of Germany's top-scoring aces. In 1941, he was appointed General of Fighters, making him the highest-ranking officer in the Luftwaffe's fighter arm. Despite facing difficulties as the tide of the war turned against Germany, Galland was one of the few Luftwaffe leaders who publicly criticized the leadership of the German government and military, including Goring and Hitler. Galland continued to fly combat missions until the end of the war, shooting down his final enemy aircraft in April 1945. He was also one of the few Luftwaffe pilots to fly the ME-262, the world's first operational jet-powered fighter aircraft. After the war, he was held by the Allies as a prisoner until 1947, when he was released and went on to work in the aviation industry. Galland passed away in February 1996, at the age of 83. Joachim Piper was a German SS combat commander during World War II, who was known for his aggressive tactics as well as his war crimes. A Kampfgruppe commander in the 1st SS Panzer Division, Piper fought on both the eastern and western fronts. Troops under his command carried out various war crimes including an infamous incident during the Battle of the Bulge, near the village of Mandy, where he and his unit were responsible for the deaths of American prisoners of war as well as Belgian civilians. Piper was ultimately found guilty of these crimes and sentenced to death. His sentence was later commuted to life in prison, and he was released in 1956. In 1976, Piper's life came to a bizarre end when his house was burned down and he was killed in the fire. There was speculation that the fire was the result of an attack by anti-fascist activists. For a relatively minor combat commander and convicted war criminal, Piper remains a high-profile and darkly controversial figure.